I remember saying goodbye to my father, telling him I was going to kindergarten. At that point, he could only moan back. And by the time I got home from school, colon cancer had claimed his life. The most incredulous part? I didn't know how sick he was until the day he died. Each time he would go to the hospital, my mom would stay home with me, and we would play with dolls together. Whenever a nurse came over, I'd go upstairs for a while. Once I remember being downstairs in the basement, we converted into Daddy's room while nurses drew his blood. My mom and I watched in the back. That is one of the only memories I have of him and medical personnel together. Even when he died, it was arranged for me to go play with a friend. That day, my world flipped upside down. Now, I didn't cry about the death until I was seven, just over two years after it happened. However, once reality hit me, it hit hard. Memories would come back to me often, even during the school day, and I'd have to stop what I was doing to calm down. What surprises me now is that, even though this occurred a long time ago, these memories are still here with me today. Father's Day is, I'd say, one of the hardest times for me. I am bombarded with reminders of how close my dad and I could have been. However, I use this as a stepping stone. My father is, was, I still have trouble saying that, an incredible person. Though I don't remember a lot about him, I recall having a set of wooden blocks. We'd arrange them and make stories out of them together. I tried making one once, and it was very bad. However, whenever he made them, the stories flowed really, really well. He also loved cooking, something I might have gotten from him. He'd spend hours in the kitchen making new recipes and socks and wouldn't let anyone else in while he, co while he cooked. Today, I enjoy making my own recipes. Sometimes I'll look in the fridge and see what I can make for fun. Most of the other things I know about my dad came from stories I was told later on. Like the time he smuggled a pizza across multiple continents, or that he had a mustache when he was younger. It's fun hearing about him, almost like getting to know him as if you're still here today. I'm sure Daddy, I never got up calling him that, is watching over me today, and that he won't let me get away with anything. I was told that if I were to ride a motorcycle, He'd come back from the dead to punish me. <laughs> I don't plan on testing that out. Here are some pictures of us together. In this one, he was showing me how to play chess. I still enjoy playing today. And here, we were playing together in my cousin's house. Here, we went fishing using glass jars instead of fishing poles. I want to make my dad proud. And this is what propels me to do... This is what propels me to come out of my comfort zone. It propelled me to come and speak in front of you all here today. It has led me to do some things I never imagined possible, some incredible things, like starting a foundation to help cancer patients in need. It donates iPads and tablets for the patients to use during chemotherapy, treatment, and recovery so they can feel a little less lonely. Today, we have raised over $3,000 for the cause and helped multiple patients in various hospitals. The idea for this charity began in fifth grade with a daydream. Since then, it has become my Mitzvah project and Girl Scout Silver Award. Just getting nonprofit status took over a year. However, I have stayed motivated because of a desire to help others. Losing my father is probably the hardest challenge I've ever faced, that I will ever face. But it started a little fire inside of me, a little spark, and this flame has pushed me to do my best. It's pushed me out of my comfort zone and helped me grow as a person and as an empath. I would want to make my dad proud. So now I ask you, why do you do what you do each day? What motivates you to be amazing? What's your spark? Thank you.